Hey everybody, I have returned. It's been 11 days since the last video. Got some stuff to show you. Temperature is 57 degrees. Humidity is 86%. We have the escape hatches opened up tonight. So we can look down in there. Moving things around because we are on the prefacy of the uh, the next exciting phase of this project, which is getting back to the airframe, finally. Because let me tell you, I'm sick and tired of welding. If you didn't hear me the first time, I'm sick and tired of welding. Got the uh, Astrodome platform out of there, sitting over there. That thing's a death trap because it's not installed. Because I'm gonna be spending a lot of time down there. Something that needs to happen soon is I need to raise this girl. Um, I guess the garage door is the, the height limit, so I might be able to squeeze another cinder block out of there. I guess I'll have to get a, a thing to roll around on my back down there. It's not gonna be fun, but the good news is, is there's not a tremendous amount of rivets that I'm gonna have to rivet up into. And I can probably just use my, my gun in some awkward positions and get her done. Ain't stopped me yet. So here we are with the uh, control column progress. That's a thrust bearing. I believe that I've made it as faithful to the originals as I could. Um, the only pictures I have are, you know, looking up at it on the air, real airframe like that. I can't really determine how big it is. The way I determined between here and here is these AN bolts are one and three eighths inches. So I gave them an eighth of an inch of clearance to make this one half inch between here and there. When I position this with the pictures that I've taken, it looks good, it looks perfect. So I think I hit the nail right on the head. This thing's very unstable, so I can't get too crazy with this, but really nice. Thrust bearings, I assume, are different from regular bearings, ball bearings, because I'm given to understand that thrust bearings exert their force out. Whereas, I'm sorry, this way and that way versus traditional bearings that would go this way. Because what's holding this whole area, or what will hold it, is it's compressed. This is what the bearing looks like in the thrust bearing housing. So the weight of the column is going to ride on that, on that ball bearing, and then the weight is then transferred back, not around. That's what I understand. Uh, there's a few videos on YouTube, but they don't make no sense to me. I'm actually waiting on the uh, 2.375 inch diameter tubing to get here. It's the same as that. I simply ran out. So I can finish these up tomorrow. Yes, these bearings are made in Canada. A few of you pointed out. Uh, they were like 15 bucks on eBay. They uh, they do the job perfectly. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a real part to examine to see where their bearings were <clears throat> or what they looked like. I just assumed, you know, that was them and made them onto the inside of the airplane. Got a nice donation yesterday. It's one of my long-term supporters. He's been here since... Uh, Pretty much the first day I started asking for money, I kind of disappeared for a few months. I was wondering if you were okay, but thank you again, and it's it's good to have you back. Seats are further back where they, where they should be. But here we are. Um... For the longest time, I've said that I didn't have the right the, the, the right dimensions to do this. And recently, or actually last night, 
I uh, I was just reminiscing on my my build, and I went into a folder I haven't been in in a long time, and I found the video that where my guy he was measuring this area, so we're good to go. I've got everything I need to space everything out between there and the aft end of the flight deck. But what I do know is from this area right there, if I can operate a tape measure. Let me just do it this way. There we go. From that area right there to about either 16 or 15 and a half inches, that is dead center middle of the torque tube I just showed you. So it's going to mount about right here. And then that's where the, uh, the base will be here. And the base is only going to come out to about right there. So there is a big aluminum frame that's starts down, well, I'm sorry, there's a wall here, like a bulkhead, and then it's gonna go flat and then triangulate up to here. And this is like a triangle, with, and that's where the plate that I just showed you was gonna mount, the square one. And then here, there's a big old wheel is where the aileron cable then transfers to the back of the airplane. Above that is another um, six inch wheel, Bakelite, I don't know if, it, if that wheel is hooked directly to it and that when that small wheel turns, it turns the big one or they're both on the same bearing, which they are. But uh, now that I've got the dimensions, I can pretty much go crazy on all this. Uh, I'm going to replace within reason all of these pop rivets with uh, squash rivets. I, there's a lot of stuff that I can't get to it, that I don't know what it looks like and it just doesn't make any sense to sit here and try to make things up. But it's going to be, it's strong now, don't get me wrong, but it's going to be really strong whenever I get those in here. <laughs> Just going to do a quick little review of um, what I've built and what I have not built. Of course, I built these escape hatches. I did not build that. I didn't build the oxygen panels. I didn't build the communication panels. But everything else here I've built. All this is scratch built. All this is scratch built. With the exception of that junction box down there. All scratch built with the exception of the comm panel, O2 panel, O2 panel, and uh, the C4 light. All scratch built, the floor in its entirety, with the exception of the seats. Up here is all scratch built with the exception of the light, the thermometer, light, the thermometer. Up here on the Astrodome mount, all scratch built with the exception of the actual Astrodome bubble and the sextant. Back here, it's all scratch built with the exception of the quadrant cover, the main panel, the lights, switches, uh, circuit breakers, tail lamps, and the little things like that. But it's gonna be really cool, really, really cool when I get that column in here and get the get the um the shafts up with the heads. It's gonna be it's just gonna change his personality completely. And of course, from here on the back of the control shaft, <laughs> there's will be a um a thingamajiggy, a rod that goes from here back to these guys that will rotate. And then they transfer the cables elsewhere to the back of the airplane. Still a long way to go, but when I get back to the airframe and, and shooting the rivets and stuff, it just goes a lot faster than the welding. And I only have to do it once. I don't have to do it, God forbid, six times. Like I have to do so much other, other stuff. Or even twice gets old. But there we are. I'll see you all next time.